In recent years, the vegan diet has skyrocketed in popularity, and as of 2024, it's estimated that around 3% of both the USA and the UK have officially incorporated the lifestyle as their own, with a further 6.4% of UK residents planning to try it at least once. The majority of vegans do so for their health or environmental and ethical reasons, and we tend to try and compare the vegan diet to the overt physical health of a meat eater, what we can literally see in front of us. Yet there's a lot to think about in what we can't see. For example, what about the differences in the brain of a vegan? I mean, it's no secret our food plays a huge role in our minds and how we function. And let's be honest, if you're hungry, you think differently. But what are these differences? Well, believe it or not, there's a lot of them. From differences in mood and emotional well-being to differences we can only see when examining the brains with brain scans. Let's discuss all the major differences between the brains of a meat eater and the brain of a vegan. I think it's gonna shock you. I think it's really important that we firstly establish that no, this video is not sponsored by Big Plant or Big Cow. I'm currently vegan myself, and the other 11 months of the year I eat meat. So the first main difference we will look at is the huge changes in cognition. If we take a look at the literature, such as the Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience in 2019, you can see that diets rich in antioxidants, such as polyphenols and berries and flavonoids in leafy greens, can protect against oxidative stress, a key factor in ageing and cognitive decline. And what's even more interesting is because of this, it's wildly hypothesised that a vegan diet can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Which is really good, but it's not quite been fully tested if this is actually the case. However, it has been tested with eating more fruits and vegetables per se, and there is a clear link between a rich Mediterranean diet and a reduced risk of diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So you've got a sort of balance. Cool. But if we flip it, there's a lot of deficiencies that vegans become more prone to with their diet. For example, research from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition all the way back in 2003, yes it also caught me off guard this was 22 years ago, found that around 50% of vegans have suboptimal levels of B12. Now B12 is hugely essential, it's responsible for maintaining myelin production in your nerve impulses and keeping you mentally sharp. A deficiency leads to memory loss, fatigue and brain fog. Low levels can even be an emergency in some situations, and with the main foods for B12 being steak and other red meat, it's clearly omitted from the vegan diet and supplementation is needed. It's the same with omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, a meta-analysis in Nutrients 2017 found that vegans have significantly lower levels, with these being responsible for maintaining cognitive function as a whole. Now you can source ALA from flaxseed and walnuts, which itself converts to DHA and EPA fatty acids, but the conversion rate is only around 5% to 10%, again, rather insufficient for optimal health. And in a different journal in 2018, Advances in Nutrition, it talks about choline. Choline itself is particularly responsible in acetylcholine production, crucial for memory and learning. It's also hugely important in synaptic transmission, a deficiency can cause muscle weakness and things like that. While she can get it from soy, quinoa and broccoli, these quantities are again really small. The main sources are all animal-based. So while vegans are at potentially less of a risk of Alzheimer's, they can lose a lot of brain power due to a lack of nutrients. Yes, it can be replaced with supplementation, but this isn't always effective and can be really pricey. So these are the differences in brain power, but what about the physical differences in the brain? Because these get even weirder. Now, let's discuss those structural and functional changes in the brain, and spoiler alert, they are really crazy. The story isn't all good or bad, it's kind of a mix between insights and challenges. So let's start with one of the most given, neuroplasticity, which basically means your brain's ability to form and reorganise all its nerves, especially with learning or even in brain damage. Now, in a study from Cell Reports in 2020, it was found that the plant-based diets rich in polyunsaturated fats, and especially antioxidants, can enhance neuroplasticity. Vegans can basically get more synapses in their brain for learning. Perhaps this is why you get muscle weakness, it forms new connections instead of maintaining the pre-existing ones, but this is hypothetical. ALA, found in those flaxseed and walnuts we spoke about, also supports this, giving more connections. A vegan brain is basically supposed to be more intertwined. Vegan brains have highly interconnected prefrontal cortexes, but deficiencies alongside can impair its function. It's kind of like having a Ferrari without a license. 
and we can see these structural changes in other parts of the brain. Take the hippocampus, for instance. Incoming face reveal, the antioxidants mentioned in, in the reduction of oxidative stress promotes neurogenesis here. There'll be more neurons for the memory, yet the choline deficiency previously mentioned is hypothesized to slow the long-term memory tension, and again you've got your stationary Ferrari. And we can even take this a bit darker. Without vitamin B12 and iron, dopamine is hypothesized to be afflicted too. The basal ganglia heavily relies on this and is a part of the dopaminergic pathway, and the basal ganglia being responsible for movement and motivation eventually sees slower motor responses and a reduction in such motivation as seen in the neuropsychiatric disease and treatment of 2017. B12 is also crucial for maintaining those myelin sheaths in your white matter, deficiency leads to what we call demyelination, which disrupts the efficacy of nerve signal transmission. Grey matter 2 is also supposedly afflicted due to the deficiencies as seen in Nature Neuroscience 2021. But the converse is also suggesting the antioxidant-rich food protects both white and grey matter. Other antioxidants can subsidise the deficiencies, ultimately protecting the tracts and your myelin sheath, contrarily to what these other studies say. And finally, as a whole, it's widely believed that the vegan diet afflicts the cerebral cortex. Yes, the antioxidants protect against oxidative damage, preserving cortical thickness, but somewhat ironically, deficiencies in omega-3 and B12 lead to cortical thinning, particularly in regions linked to attention and memory. This is actually the brain of a child who was fed a vegan diet for all their childhood, and due to the lack of B12, their brain doesn't develop properly, but they become restored with B12 supplements. You can see here that it's clearly not right. On the contrary, imagine we have a strong transmission electron microscope, and we can see molecules. If you look at the molecules in a vegan brain, we'd see significantly less fatty plaque that can cause ischemic strokes in the brain. Yet, on the other hand, we can also see less neurotransmitters such as choline, as already discussed, and of course, serotonin, and we'll get onto depression soon. But for now, it's a lot of nuance. Some studies say a vegan diet will shrink your brain, and others say it'll do the complete opposite. So, is there any way to find an answer in which one is correct? And what about emotional changes? Can they help answer? To end with, let's discuss mental health to see if we can see a clear benefit to the consumer. Let's begin with depression. So, because the vegan diet is so rich in anti-inflammatory foods, it's believed it reduces depression naturally, which is an anti-inflammatory based disease. In depression, you end up with a load of cortisol in your brain from your adrenal glands, which dumps loads of cytokines there, leading to the eventual inflammation. But this isn't actually what happens. In almost every piece of literature, it says veganism and depression are highly linked, and a common theme is around a lack of serotonin. You see, there's less tryptophan in a meatless diet, which gets turned to the feel-good neurotransmitter itself. Now, obviously correlation does not equal causation in every account, but it's still a pretty good link. Other takeaways from other studies is that the gut microbiome too plays a crucial role in your mental health. The fibre-rich diet promotes the growth of beneficial gut bacteria, which conversely also play a role in reducing anxiety and depression. Fermented foods also enhance your gut health like kimchi and miso. If we flip the pendulum again though, we can see the deficiencies lead to converging symptoms. If we take the choline deficiency for instance, this is often hypothesised to see an increase in compulsive behaviours as characterised by OCD and emotional regulation can become harder as said in advances in nutrition 2018. It's the same with iron and irritability and low mood. But again, for even more nuance, vegans reportedly feel less negative in general, primarily due to the positive environmental impact they are having. The thing is, it's all about a complete balance. Most vegans do actually supplement, with the majority buying things to aid them in their diet. If we take all of these deficiencies into account, such as iron, B12 and choline, you can buy each and every single one of these supplements to top up and not be deficient. Sure, a supplement isn't as good as the actual real thing, but it's a mighty fine way to prevent these deficiencies as all vegans seem to do. And now that they're prevented, they're reducing the negative changes to their brains whilst still reaping the positive ones. And obviously, they've saved Sally the cow. So, in summary, yes, the vegan brain is very different, with differences in the cerebral cortex, white and grey matter, even the hippocampus, and obviously huge differences in the concentration of our fan favourite neurotransmitters, such as serotonin. Yes, there is positives, but there's also a fair few negatives that we do need to consider, but even then, they kind of can be mitted with supplementation. But obviously, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you don't, well, Sally the cow is going to come for you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. 
Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It's free and it really helps me out. See you next time.